Well, when you think of traditional surgery, it can be painful, take a long time to recover. Mm -hmm. But this new robotic surgery is really a game changer. Yeah, we think of it as a futuristic option, but our next guest has been performing the Da Vinci robotic surgery system for five years now. Yeah, from the Olson Center for Women's Health at UNMC, Dr. Carrie Rodebaugh. Thanks for coming. Good morning. We Good morning. Appreciate it. Good morning. So tell Thanks. us about this robotic surgery. What exactly is it? Well, it's basically minimally invasive surgery with the assistance of a robot that just really enhances everything and revolutionizes surgery. All right, what makes it different from traditional forms? Well, surgery. with traditional surgery, we have a very large incision, mm -hmm. and with the robotic surgery, I'm able to perform um, very small incisions, mm -hmm. so that really changes the patient's experience. So the video we're looking at now, explain this. Well, this is the actual console. When you look through the uh, eyepieces, I see in three dimensions, mm -hmm. um, and that allows me to see actual tissue planes. Mm -hmm. I can see vascular pieces. This is the robot here where those are the robotic arms. Very small instruments get inserted into uh, the points in the patient. Mm -hmm. The instruments are wristed, and so it's a very intuitive system. Whatever my hand does in the console, the robotic hand does inside of the patient. Um, so it can be extremely precise, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's an excellent procedure oh, for sure. patients to have. The precision. We've heard about surgery performed through, a, I guess, a, a laparoscope or mm -hmm. a, a, a small rod or table. Is this right. the same type of surgery? It's, or what is this? It's similar. The um, traditional laparoscopy, the sticks, the instruments are straight, whereas ro with robotic surgery, they're wristed. So I can get around corners, and it's very, very mm -hmm. precise. And you can see here just an example of some suturing. You can see how um, precise the uh, movements are. This is yeah. remarkable, and the, the, really the benefit of the precision, and Mike mentioned it off the top, is it's less painful. It's not that week long or right. in some cases months of recovery. The vast, vast majority of my patients go home the very next day, whereas if they'd had traditional open surgery, they'd be in the hospital often four or five days. Mm -hmm. um, the pain is much less because the pain comes from the incision. So when you have a large incision, there's more pain. Um, this is just an example here of the surgeon sitting at the console. Mm -hmm. This is them, the surgeon moving the instruments. This is fascinating. Yeah. What about what about insurance? That's going to be a big question. For I a have lot of never people. had an issue. This is just another way to do minimally invasive surgery, mm -hmm. and insurance companies, for the most part, cover it. Now, is this something that people can choose to have done? Choose robotic well, surgery? Well, certainly there are some procedures that are more amenable to it. Um, from my perspective as a GYN oncologist, I choose to do this because it allows me to do cancer staging surgeries through small incisions. Um, so you just need to talk with your physician mm -hmm. to see if it's something that would be a good idea for you. What are some of the most common types of surgeries that we might be able to relate to? And, and well, obviously a lot of gynecologic procedures, the hysterectomies and my um, um, situation, cancer staging surgeries, mm -hmm. um, but prostatectomies with the urologist, cardiothoracic surgeons are now using the robot, colorectal surgeons, um, we are now, ENT surgeons are now beginning to use it, and it really is changing things for patients. Yeah, how do you know if you're one of those candidates that um, it can use this robotic surgery? Well, you need to talk to your physician, and obviously um, they can make those decisions mm -hmm. with you, but from my standpoint, Every patient should be considered for robotic surgery unless there's some obvious contraindication. You know, as a patient, I automatically put myself in those shoes. Uh -huh, sure. And I think I love the new technology because of how quickly you heal, the yeah. amount of pain you don't experience. Right, right. Um, but I also want to know that the person doing it has experience. You've been doing this for a number of years. Right, right. Yeah, how important do you think that is, that you've got that kind of experience in your pocket? Well, certainly that's a huge benefit. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, at UNMC, we're training physicians. Um, and we have proctoring positions, so surgeons aren't on the machine by themselves, mm -hmm. um, and, and it's very safe. And it's safer than traditional surgery because we can see so much better. Mm -hmm. Everything's in three dimension. I can see planes instead of just flat surfaces. Mm -hmm. It's, it's pretty amazing. That was my question. With yeah. traditional surgery, there's a lot more risks involved. You're kind of eliminating the, the number of risks involved uh, Well, we hope so. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah, because I can see individual blood vessels and take care of them before mm -hmm. I cut them. One more quick question. Sure. Your patients who come to you, maybe they're a little bit reluctant about mm -hmm. robotic surgery. You do it, and then they realize how great it was. Right. How right. is that for you? What's the response like from them? Well, it's, it's really very rewarding. I have mm -hmm. patients that go home from the hospital and don't ever fill their prescription for their pain medicine because wow. they that's didn't have, great. that's mm -hmm. not everybody's experience, but mm -hmm. they didn't have pain. 
That's so it's, a, that's it's pretty something. amazing. And we're taking a look at the website right here. What's mm -hmm. the web address that people can go to? Do you know mm -hmm. what, what do we have? Yeah, there? we have a full screen that'll have that website yeah. on it. It has a phone number on it as well. Um, does somebody need to go through maybe their primary care physician before they get to you, or can they call you directly? Um, generally, they um, get referred yeah. by their primary care physicians because mm -hmm. I'm a cancer specialist. Yes. But this is the website for the Olson Center um, for Women's Health and UNMC physicians. So if you're interested, yeah. give us a call and see if you might be a candidate. And by the way, the Olson Center for Women's Health, you tackle everything. Absolutely. For, for women, younger, Anything more mature women. Through the whole spectrum of life, we do mm -hmm. OBGYN, internal medicine, psychiatry, physical therapy. We've got it all at the Anything Olson you need. Center. It's 559-4500 or online, UNMC Physicians. Dot com. Dr. Rodebaugh, thank you for coming in. Thanks a lot. This it's is intriguing. It's fascinating new technology. Yeah. I've got a lot more questions. Stick around later. <laughs> like she doesn't have show. anything better to do. She doesn't have anything going on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, doctor. Thanks for You're coming welcome. in. Guests of the Morning Blend start their day with coffee from Pears Gourmet, the official coffee of the Morning Blend. To learn more about Pears, just go to omahamorningblend.com and click on that Pears logo right on the homepage. All right, think quick. How long should the average transmission last? Well, don't feel bad because we don't know that question, the answer to that either. <laughs> <laughs> but our next guest does, Mr. Peter Fink from Certified Transmission. He's going to join us after the break. Thank you.